we return to our coverage of Nintendo Power proper with Nintendo Power 97 for June of 1997, the first issue of Nintendo Power's 10th year. As a quick note, um, if the video looks different, if the gameplay footage looks different from normal, I ran into some technical difficulties with doing gameplay capture for this issue on my N64, so I just switched to using an emulator and a USB N64 controller instead, so the gameplay is going to look a little different. Our cover game this issue is Clay Fighter 63 and a third, and I am somewhat dreading reviewing this game based on the previous coverage we've gotten. In our letters column, we get a suggestion for a coolest accessory award for the Nestor Awards. And this is something I actually really agree with. The Super Nintendo and SNES had an array of interesting third-party controllers. Some honestly fantastic, like ASCII's arcade sticks, and others are distinctly less so. I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. So I'd love to have a similar feature especially considering what we might end up with seeing with third-party controllers for the N64, as people try doing third-party controllers that adapt to some of the hiccups that the N64 controller has, or weaknesses in certain areas and strengths in others. In the power charts, we have one last new Super Nintendo game, or possibly last, with Lost Vikings 2 entering the rankings. On the N64, we have three new games. Blast Core, Doom 64, and Star Fox 64. We have our cover game with Clay Fighter 63 and the third. The game isn't done yet, or so they say, but they're running this article anyway. We have notes on most of the game's arenas. The game features 3D movement in the arenas, or so it says, uh, which appear to not, the, the arenas that is, appear to not have a necessary degree of regularity to them, which is interesting and also features multi-part stages where you can get knocked through walls and that sort of thing. Uh, adapting a concept that Mortal Kombat used in a 2D environment and we'd see later with like the Dead or Alive games. But then we get back to the caricatures and, oh, Christ, just when I thought Hung Gun was bad enough, we have another racist caricature character design with the Chinese martial artist and chef Kung Pao. What the hell, gang? Uh, what the hell? Well, having played through the story mode of Clay Fighter 63 and a third with Bad Mr. Frosty, the one thing, well, a, a thing I will say for it is they no longer are using the more offensive ableist slur as a combo descriptor anymore, or at least if they are, I never got a long enough combo that that message popped up, or at least hit nobody hit that combo window. That said, look, this game, like it says, oh, there's 3D, um, or 3D movement, but it doesn't really take advantage of the 3D in the same way as that something like Tekken or Virtual Fighter was doing at this time. All you're really doing at this point is rotating a background without it having any actual impact on gameplay. You can't necessarily sidestep to avoid attacks, nor roll on the ground um, to avoid ground attacks. It's it's pretty dull and generic. All this is made worse by the fact that the characters actually talk too much. I realize not hearing that much of it because I did not get gameplay audio captured, but in any case. Um, when characters say lines in the Street Fighter Mortal Kombat, by comparison, it's paired with special moves and super attacks. Ryu says Hadouken when he does a Hadouken, that sort of thing. He doesn't say anything when he's doing a punch. Outside from like a like general just um, grunt, act, grunt sound, a huh, or something like that. Here, it's paired with heavy attacks. It's paired with grabs. Plus, with special moves, and also you have the announcer shouting out the combo descriptors and all that sort of thing. It makes for a really obnoxious experience to play, and it is not helped by the fact that, again, characters like Hungan and Kung Pao are are racist caricatures, and their dialogue reflects that. Um, also not help that, like, 
you don't have any black actors in this doing the voice for Hongan or for Kung Pao. Like Jim Cummings does the vote is the voice for Hongan. And it's it's kind of gross. The thing I will say in the game's favor as an unequivocal point is that the game uses the controller held in um the conven in the conventional hands on left and uh on the on nine and three uh controller position to great effect it uses all six face buttons for cop for um attack moves and that sort of thing it does that right if the n64 could do sprites really well as well as say the saturn does um then it could potentially handle or the this is a control layout that would work for that um potentially but otherwise the rest of the game is just blah and unpleasant and again kind of racist in multiple situations not happy with it on a better note because it's hard to be worse we have Hexen 64, a first-person shooter with a fantasy RPG theme from Raven Software. Quick aside, shout out to Raven Software's QA department for unionizing, and I hope that the Activision buyout um, by Microsoft creates an environment where Raven can get free of the Call of Duty quarry and make their own games again. Anyway, we have notes on the first level of the game and information on four-player deathmatch, which is... The first first-person shooter we've had so far that has featured that option, since GoldenEye 64 isn't out yet. So, um, Hexen 64 plays a lot better on the 6 and 3 um, control scheme with the analog stick, but that's not saying much in the game's favor. The controls are not as good as the controls for Doom 64 Turok, aggravated by the fact that the game is dependent, particularly in the first few levels, on melee combat, with success being based on dodging and weaving to move in and out of melee range so you can hit your opponents, but they're not able to hit you. Now, if you gave me a mouse and keyboard, I'd be fine. Simple as using a controller with two analog sticks, one for aiming and camera movement, and one for moving the characters, and I'd also do all right. But the N64 controller can't quite cut it with the default mappings, and the game doesn't give any options to fully remap the controls to something that would work better for this. Like say, um, you know, changing how, um, like, like changing some stuff with the movement or, um, switching weapons or that sort of thing. In the classified information column, we have more cheats for Turok. Our third game of the issue is another fighting game. War Gods, um, which has semi-digitized characters with like digitized likenesses of people um, put over the uh, polygonal objects, character objects, but also with the 3D arena. There's even fatalities like in Mortal Kombat. We have move lists for each of the characters along with various strategies. By contrast with Clay Fighter, while War Gods has better executed polygonal sprites with a somewhat smoother movement, the controls are much less usable, with the punch and kick buttons not being adjacent to each other, instead being spaced by the block and 3D movement buttons. This feels like a specific problem with adapting the Mortal Kombat style of control scheme, with two attack buttons for punches and kicks, followed by dedicated block, and then adding, trying to add 3D movement in general, and also working with the N64 controller in particular. It feels odd to say that Clay Fighter is the better controlling game, while War Gods is the graphically superior game. We have a preview of another game from DMA Design and Rockstar Games with a preview of Space Station Silicon Valley, with the article generally just being a preview. Some <clears throat> gameplay notes in here, but nothing too dramatic, we're not enough to cover the game as yet. We have additional coverage of Turok with maps of many of the warp levels. I've already reviewed the game. I think I even showcased one of the warp levels in my gameplay footage, so we'll leave that there. We have Aero Fighters Assault uh, for our last game of the issue, a combat flight sim on the N64 with some science fiction elements. 
We have notes on different fighters and their pilots, although the preview covering the game mechanics. There's also descriptions of four levels in the game, which appears to be kind of trying to do an N64 take on the Ace Combat formula. Arrow Fighters Assault has the structure of Ace Combat missions with the reward system with lives continues points of the Afterburner games, which makes for something of a problem. On the one hand, N64 Analog Stick does moderately well, actually, for the turning and maneuvering that comes with dogfight. Um, but the fact is, there isn't a way for me to do some of the other stuff I need to do to be successful this kind of game, because the, is there isn't an option to remap controls to those things. Um, I, there isn't a button I can press to target who's targeting me, um, or there isn't, or like, for that matter, there isn't the option to change who, what, who the highlighted target is at all. Uh, it's just whoever happens to be in the crossways. And at games like Ace Combat, even if not the early games, the later games, certainly learn that you need to be able to highlight who's on your tail, and then let's so let you can then maneuver and keep an eye on them metaphorically. Or alternatively, you take a page from Wind Commander, a game series that has been adapted to this to the Super Nintendo. Um, there isn't a way to give orders to my uh, wingmen. There isn't an option to tell them, okay, hey, um, or the other fighter planes, target the person who's targeting me. There isn't an option for the player, for the uh, squadron mate who's in the A-10 Warthog. Hey, target the ground aircraft that are targeting me. That sort of thing. And I don't even know that like, there's a way to do this to the pause menu or anything like that. In terms of like issue orders. It would be nice to just be able to do that. Like pause the game, issue orders, go back to the main menu or that sort of thing. Even if it's just like set general priorities. Like, hey, standing order. If somebody's targeting me, um this 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 pilot target that opponent. Um that sort of thing. I'm in hot. Honestly, this is a game that feels like would would fare better a dual like later on when the dual analog stick controller had been introduced for like Confirmed. one on a system like that, or even just on the PlayStation One because of the, the increased accessibility Confirmed. of the shoulder buttons and the options that come. Otherwise, this definitely feels like a game where the N64 controller is good. We have a comic this issue again with um, the first installment of a comic by Dark Horse um, related to Blast Core. In this case, this issue is setting up the story hook of the game and who the members of the Blast Core team are. Next up is the what they call the Mega Man database, which is basically a master list of what weapons work best against each robot master for all the Mega Man games on Nintendo consoles to date. Useful. Well, obviously, the not going to help with the PlayStation version of the latest Mega Man game. We have coverage of Tokyo Game Show 1997, um, with focus more or less exclusively on N64 games, not so much on what's going on with the Game Boy, which I think is actually possibly a disappointment because there may actually be some significant games coming out. I believe Pokemon is, if not in development at this point, then is like recently out in Japan. And so there'd probably be a lot of buzz there on that. This could be a case of Nintendo not being sure if they wanted to put po bring Pokemon out in the US themselves. And so not necessarily over, not hyping it using this mechanism because they didn't want to over because they didn't want to set expectations to something people weren't getting. I don't think this is the case um, on Pokemon because that's that's Nintendo first party more or less. So that'd be a Shoshinkai thing. Um, but any case, uh, we have more coverage of Disney's Aladdin for the Super Nintendo. Basically, just general tips and advice because the game's getting a reprint. In Counselor's Corner, we get more tips for Harvest Moon, including instructions on where to plant the Snowflower, plus more tips and advice for Super Mario 64. Only one Game Boy gave this issue, and once again, we are recovering yet another game we've previously covered with Donkey Kong Land 2, covering the late portion of the game. 
No also rands in the now playing column this issue. And in pack watch, we have a preview of Extreme G along with additional screenshots for Ocarina of Time, which is still titled Zelda 64. My pick of the issue is a tentative Hexen 64. Not because it's a good pick, it's because it's the least past bad pick. Again, props for it having deathmatch multiplayer before GoldenEye, but I also understand why it didn't catch on like GoldenEye did. Hexen is mainly focused with some magic providing range and that sort of things. Um, whereas GoldenEye better fits the traditional first-person shooter idiom. Arrowfighter's Assault is probably a close second for a similar reason. It's trying to, to do a gameplay type that has been done on the PlayStation and the Saturn and earlier consoles with various degree on various degrees of success on those console, but ran into the problems that kept it from keep truly shining. Otherwise, our, this issue is two fighting games. Each make ha each have half of a good fighting game. Great graphics for War Gods. Honestly, good controls for Clay Fighters 63 and a third. But given the companies involved and some of the other choices they made with each of those fighting games, I can't necessarily trust where if you took these development teams and mashed them together to use the good parts of those of those games and not instead put out something that was a absolute mess. Now you will die. Target, direct hit. That's confirmed. Good job. I'm in, hot. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.